Hey y'all, so today we're looking at Unity Asset Transformer Toolkit, which was previously known as Pixie's Plugin. So I'm already inside of the Unity Editor. That is because as mentioned in our introductory video last week, there is only one way to use this tool and that is within the editor because it is installed as a package. So this is the only of the Unity Asset Transformer tools that is required to be within the Unity pipeline. The rest are all agnostic. The first thing that we want to do is have a project open. I've just opened the template HDRP scene. Uh, many of you are probably very familiar with this project. And from here, I want to go up into Window, Package Management, and Package Manager. Come over into the Unity Registry, scroll down, and find Asset Transformer Toolkit X Pixies. You can also see some versioning, some change logs, etc. in here. If you do not see this tool, or you do not see the E next to it for entitlement, it likely means that you are not on a Unity industry license. That is a requirement to use this tool. I'll go ahead and install this package. All right, so we now have our package installed. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the package manager. So one of the nice quality of life improvements here is that you're no longer going up to a drop down menu for every other operation. It all just comes in here as part of this new asset transformer toolkit window. So from within here, you can do a variety of things from importing a model that can be, uh, again, as we mentioned in our intro video, a CAD model, a BIM model, or you can import a point cloud model. You can also ingest um, regular polygonal models and just optimize them using this workflow. You then have a few different operations that you might run, like conforming normals, repairing the mesh, decimating, removing occluded geometry, removing holes, retopologizing, creating imposters, merging parts, changing pivots. Uh, centering origins, things of that nature, getting into UVs and how UVs are created here. And then if you want to get into any colliders, whether that be creating or removing them. So these are kind of the, the bare bones tools that you'll get into. But one of the most important features comes after you import a model, and that's going to be creating a rule set. So let's go ahead and import uh, just a standard model, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so from within here, I'm going to select an assembly file that's going to contain sub assemblies as well as part files. You can see this is kind of a massive model. Uh, so this would be something that would be quite difficult to ingest unless I hand this off to a 3D artist, someone to retopologize the asset, create polygons from the parametric data, and then import it into the editor. So what I'm gonna do is look for our main assembly file here which is called Motor Group IAM. So I'm gonna open that one. We can see the different scale that it automatically will set to. I'm just gonna do 0 0.01 because I've imported this one before and I'd like it to come in a bit larger than it's intended to. From here, you can dictate if you would like for this to include things like lines, points, variant data, PMI data, animations, and more. You can also automatically create channel UVs, uh, but realize that all of this exists within a scriptable object. So the most important thing here is that you can always come back and import and re-import using this scriptable object that exists within your project now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import and let's see how this goes. So our prefab is already created. Let's go ahead and drag it into the scene and start to look at what this looks like. So right away, the fact that this has come through with its materials is quite impressive. I'm very happy about that. So now a couple of the things that we can do, and I'll keep this relatively short just to uh, keep in mind the timing on the tutorial would be to do a rule set. So if I go back into this motor group, CAD importer scriptable object, and go into rule engine, 
I can now see that I can do a series of actions. So right now it's getting the entire assembly. So let's say I wanna take this and I just wanna optimize it all immediately. I wanna decimate all of it to a target ratio of 70% of current topology or current poly count. Then I wanna add another rule. And I wanna say, okay, now get the assembly file, but I'd like for you to merge this hierarchy because this is pretty gnarly. So now I'm going to say hierarchy, merge, and I'm going to merge by final level just so it all steps up by one. Then I want to add a rule and let's say I want to, let's say I want to filter on name and let's say I want this to be equal to NOS because I know that the nose is called NOS in here. So here's our NOS, which is nose. Then I'm also going to come back over here and I'm going to say add another rule and let's say filter on name equal to, and actually I'm just going to say contains because I don't want to get this exactly right. That would be a little bit laborious. And I'll say prop and I also don't care if it's case sensitive. Now for both of these, I want to do something similar. I want to set metadata to one, one, just as something as a placeholder. And I'm going to set metadata to one, one. Now I can add a rule and I can filter on metadata and say, if this is equal to one, one, then I want you to go ahead and merge those meshes. I want you to set the name as propeller. And I want you to assign a new material. So I'm going to set our material to, let's create a new material and call it neon. And I'll just make this a very obnoxious neon color. That'll work for right now. We'll crank up the metallic and smoothness. And let's come back down here and add in our neon. From here, I can then re-import and it's going to apply all of this for me. Let's go ahead and hit re-import with all of these rules assigned and see how this goes. So we can now see that this nose has applied, the asset has been optimized a bit, and we can go ahead and continue working with it from here. We can also from here go into the LODs and start to generate through re-importing this asset with LODs with different levels of decimation, or we can even create imposters from here as well. So what we could do is set up three or four LOD levels, and as the camera zooms in and out, it can automatically handle that transition for us. This has been an intro into the toolkit and how it works within Unity. The nice thing is now that I have this rule set, I can apply this to a variety of other assets as well. You can also create new rule sets in their entirety if you don't want to be overriding your default rule set. That way you could come in here and have one that's for factories, one for engines, one for that E57 bunny model that we all see online. So give it a look. If you have any questions, please reach out anytime. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.